Hello, America. Oh. And welcome <laughs> to the Mike and Brad Show. I'm Mike Murray. And I'm Brad Pierce. And we <laughs> are back, baby. It's been a couple weeks. That's um, we don't. I know. We used to do this very regular, but, you know, we got very busy schedules all of a sudden. I was. And gonna, I don't know how we're squeezing nothing into the whole week. <laughs> I was going to say we're lazy, but Mike's excuse of lazy we're busy. Lazy is a frond de pomme. <laughs> Uh, my, I, Mike's excuse that we're very busy is a better excuse. Uh, I have upgraded. My hand is getting better. Yes, I have this looks thing very now. Good. Look, now you just look like a secretary with top of <laughs> <top> the tunnel. <laughs> just been it, typing before, too many TPS reports. It, and it used I, to be like really like, oh my God, this guy got his hand crushed in a um, trash compact or look something. As, but no. I don't look now as cool. Now, now, now you just look like a bowler. I don't look as <laughs> I am a professional bowler. <laughs> and it, yeah, we should go bowling. We should go yeah, bowling. Like a Brad more. show, we should take this show on the road yeah, to the what, local what bowling alley. What would we, should we name the team? Ooh. Like, they always name their teams the bowling teams. Mm. They like that. Bowling is like the hairdressing, the hairdressing naming of sports. So they name it, like hairdressers, believe it or not, they have the best names for for, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, a cut above and all that. So you that need stuff. to have a clever name for our bowling team. Yes. Please like write strikers. in the comments what you would like uh, the yes, Mike and, yeah. and Brad show bowling team name would be. Yes. Uh, have I showed you the sky yet, Mike? I'm going to show the viewers. It's healing nicely. It's oh, nice. getting there. I'm very excited about the progress. Look at that. Look at that. I'm Wolverine. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, gonna, you, claws look, like, are gonna yeah, come you out. look like Wolverine. I'm going to have claws come out. Yes. Uh, so a lot going on. Uh, it, what today is it today? Today's Thursday, correct? So tomorrow, as you may or oh, may not know, tomorrow is the big, big fight. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. So uh, I was thinking about this, and it just happens to be that our friend Gary Batman Bledo, he is the uh, two different weight class champion for CES MMA. He just defended his 170 belt at Foxwoods and won in epic fashion. And as I was thinking about the Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight, I realized Jake Paul and our friend Gary, the MMA same fighter, age. are the same age. And Mike and Mike Tyson are the same age. <laughs> so I think if Mike Tyson pulls off this miracle win, I think you should fight Gary. I should fight Gary. <laughs> you know what? I'll kick his ass. I'm not scared of Gary Boletto. The guy collects Legos for crying out loud. He's a child. I, I think the whole thing, it was the guy with the guy just laid down for him. Laid down and said, punch me in the head. Yeah, it was an easy, it was an easy <laughs> fight. Sure he was Jack, but still. I think if Tyson wins, it's, it's all the motivation you need. Uh, I, I, I'm a big Mike Tyson fan and I grew up you know, I mean, I was an adult when he started coming on the scene, and there's a couple of things, a couple of things that bother me about this fight, and I was excited thinking, because mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you watched the documentary, yeah, yeah, he looks great. Yeah, he, he looks great. He looks great, Head but pads. here's the thing, 14 ounce gloves, that's mm -hmm. where I have a problem. For, now, the normal gloves, I believe, are like nine ounces, mm -hmm. something like that, so it's a pillow fight. It's a pillow fight. I don't think. I wouldn't I don't get think, in that pillow fight. I don't think. This kid, Jake Paul, say what you want about him, but the kid's determined. The kid's working up. He's a tough kid. Like, he's a tough kid. And um, he's definitely going to have the stamina to go the distance. Mike Tyson, being a 60 year old man, probably going to have two rounds in him. Mm -hmm. He's going to make it happen in, within two rounds. I think when Jake Paul is going to get hit like he's never been hit before, that's a fact, even with the 14 hour stuff. But I, I'm not seeing a good outcome for Mike, Mike Tyson. I think, I think after the second round, Mike Tyson's just going to be covering up and Jake Paul is going to just keep hitting him. So, so one thing people haven't, I don't know why people haven't commented on more about is, because uh, people are acting like it's a lot of unknowns, which it is, but also, Mike Tyson did just box Roy Jones Jr. four years ago, so which isn't that long ago. So you can go back and watch it was that just fight. Four years ago, that's it. Yes, 2020. Hmm. So if you go back and watch that fight, you can see what Mike Tyson. It, it obviously is a little bit older now. Yeah. But you can see him move. You can see him punch. One thing that, a couple of things about and that. Roy Jones one, way better than uh, way better boxer than. Right, but if you look at Roy Jones, he did yeah. not bother to get in shape for that fight. He didn't even bother to do steroids. As you can see, 
<laughs> Tyson is loaded up on roids. By the way, if you are going to fight Gary, please load up on steroids. I'll definitely um, do the juice. You can so tell you, that Tyson is got a connection, hook me up, and we'll get started on this after our bowling match. Every, <laughs> every single steroid that Russia has to offer has been shipped over directly into Mike Tyson I'm going to train on mountaintops. <laughs> <laughs> Gary! <laughs> I, uh, so... So, but you can see him move around, stuff like that. One thing that I will say that was shocking about that match was that Tyson did go the distance. I thought he'd get exhausted after about 30 seconds at his age. But you can see when you watch that fight, I think they had a gentleman's agreement. It was more like a, a sparring match. Yeah, it was a sparring match. They weren't trying to kill each other. Yeah. Um, I hope, hope, hope Tyson wins. I think Jake Paul will win just because time is undefeated, as they say. But if Tyson pulls off the upset, the next local match will be Mike, the machine, Murray, versus Carrie Batman I'm Maletta. I'm my own school after I beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> right across the street from his gym. <laughs> it's going to be called Maletto's Express. <laughs> you just charge a dollar less per month than yeah, his gym. Yeah, one dollar less. Hey. A spite I'm a, store. I'm a capitalist. Everybody knows I'm a capitalist. A spite gym. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> yeah, like, um... Are you watching the fight tomorrow? Yes, I am. I got a show tomorrow night. I'm going to try to fly home and catch the main yeah. event. Yeah. No, the female match is going to be that's really... That's probably going to be the that, best match. That's the night. And, yeah. uh, but what's going to be really cool is watching that fight in Dallas, in the stadium. Mm. And I got to imagine it's going to be close to 90,000 people oh, because... Yeah. The seats hold, I think, 70. Yeah. And then you've got the whole floor because it's It'll boxing. Be My yeah. wife said to me the other day, she goes, hey, we should go to that. I'm like, do you <laughs> have <laughs> any <laughs> idea how much those tickets cost? Yeah, I'm like, it's going to be like millionaire, millionaire, billionaire, billionaire, millionaire, yeah, let's millionaire. let's go. And if we're lucky, we'll get to sit next to Joe Rogan and Donald, <laughs> and Donald Trump, too. <laughs> it's going to cost. So we're selling my mother-in-law's house so we can get nosebleed seats at the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson and, fight. Oh yeah, you can watch it on Netflix or you can watch it on the Jumbo trying to pay $10,000 for that. Yeah, right it's, it's going to be insane. That, that's a good question. After the show, we'll look it up and then next week's show, we'll um, make, make a note of that. Um, we'll see what the tickets were going for. Oh, okay. Ticket cost. And, and yeah. we're going to find out what kind of deal Netflix gave them. Yeah, uh, hopefully enough to pay for the funeral. The poor Tyson does not need any more brain damage. Yeah, you just you shouldn't be getting punched in the head at 60 years old. I think it's irresponsible. However, I will watch it with a bucket of popcorn. Uh, all right, so uh, I don't know. I'm hoping you can explain this to me. You always know. Mike's a man about town. He kind of knows what's going on. So I have little bullet I got points. My finger on the pulse yeah. of America. He's got his ear to the streets. <laughs> I got my, wait, can you put your ear to the street? Oh, I can't think of that line. Mean streets of Johnson. Um, yeah. The words on the street, so keep your ear to the concrete. That's a, a line from uh, AZ. Anyways, so apparently they have, uh, you, can, you can mail or, or ship your resume to someone on a Pizza Hut box. Did, have you heard about this? Well, it, that's a tactic that, like, um, if, let's say there's a job opening somewhere mm -hmm. or you want a job in a certain you want to get the attention of, of an employer. And so you get come up with creative ideas right. to send your resume. So that's been around for a long time where people would open up the pizza box and the resume Wait, would but be But this, this is uh, like, it's printed on the box. Oh! I believe. Pizza Hut, it's a whole thing with Pizza Hut. It's a whole thing. It's, it's very smart. Apparently, um, I don't know if you guys have been following RF Kennedy, but apparently there's a lot of fat people in America. I was unaware of this. <laughs> so, oh my so God. it turns out if you're going for a we job. We should have a tick around our show. It's like Brad's, men, Brad's suggestion there's fat people in America. <laughs> so, so, I wouldn't know any of these people, but carry on. <laughs> As you were saying. So, it's a brilliant strategy because if you're going for a job, there's like a 90% chance that the boss is a fat person. Oh. So, so we're going to get canceled. <laughs> We're going to have Dave from so the owner. You, Dave's overweight about just 20 no, pounds. No, he lost weight he recently, did. Dave, yeah. from Brood. Shout out to Brood for having us. Dave <laughs> lost a bunch of weight, unlike some people. Uh, we, you can ship your resume and earn a little brownie point. In the old days, what people would do is they would sleep with the boss to get a job. <laughs> Not that, anymore. That Those still two. works. <laughs> That worked for me. <laughs> That's why I'm not doing anything. 
<laughs> that's so uh, if you don't want to have sex with a, a potential employee, what I recommend is uh, feed their belly and send them your resume on a Pizza Hut box. I don't think you're gonna get a lot of like big wig, like Fortune 500 type jobs with this tactic. Dude, I just got a great idea. All right, hit me. We gotta make a resume up and have it sent to somebody. Oh, that's a very good idea. Is that? But now the resume is gonna be different because they're gonna be hiring both of us. Hire us for Almost a show. Almost like brothers. Hire like, us for a comedy show. Huh? Hire comedians, Brad. And my, that's a great idea. I'm an All idea right. man. I don't know how to pronounce it, and your pronunciations are horrible. But it's it's supposed to be like resume, like pizza. Like Retzames or something. It's it's R E S Z A. See they have the Z A. Oh, they say they yeah, a Retz, little wood play. I got it. Retzames, Retz, oh. Retzames. Anyways, shout out to Pizza Hut. I haven't had a Pizza Hut pizza in at least ten years. It's pretty bad. Anyways. Um, obviously, now look. goes our sponsor. Pizza, <laughs> any opportunity for Pizza Hut to sponsor us. But you know who's still on board? Honeydew. We still get, oh, yeah. we still get messages from Honeydew. Honeydew does uh, message us. I'm very... Uh, and Domino's. They Domino's loved us also. Me and my relationship with Honeydew started on Rocky and Rocky Waters, but we have become good friends over the last couple months, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, Elephant in the room, the big day's coming up. Your Wait, wait, what do you mean by elephant in the room? <laughs> Your favorite holiday is just around the corner. Thanksgiving is, uh, it is my favorite holiday. Next to Christmas, Thanksgiving. Um, I, I just love the whole, the whole feast thing about it, you know. Like, I, I didn't mean it like that way, um, but it's cranberry sauce season. It is cranberry yeah. sauce season. Yeah. Now, I believe, now Mike and I don't always agree on everything, but I'm, Fairly certain we are in full agreement on the cranberry sauce debate. You like the canned, like it's all one shape, right? It has Me to too. be from the can. That mush crap that they put out there, oh, what is that garbage? My brother's a chef and he'll make his own cranberry sauce and he won't touch a can, but nothing beats canned cranberry sauce. The perfect I actually slice. have a bunch of cans in my house ready to go. Ready to go, ready baby. To go. So if we're having like chicken or something, I'll, I'll slice it up. And you gotta slice it up and put it in the fridge a couple hours and chill it a little bit. So um, Mike's a doomsday prepper. And uh, in his little cave underneath his backyard, <laughs> so there'll be like all cranberry. nuclear dust, like ash and everything coming in through the windows in there. And all I have is cranberry, cranberry sauce. sauce. When the zombie apocalypse starts, yeah. please hide in my basement. And Captain Crunch, but no milk because I didn't, <laughs> I'm not a good prepper. <laughs> so Thanksgiving's coming up. Do they still do the Macy's Day Parade? That was the big they thing when I was a it. kid. Yes, they I still don't do. know who watches that, but apparently it's still a thing. I think most people have it just on the TV while they're getting ready for the dinner. Mm. You know, they're cooking the dinner. Tra it's a tradition. That's it's what a it tradition is. It's a tradition. And, and I, I just hate, hate it. I hate the fake... Oh, it's, it's so fake. It's it's it's, a, it, cause it, it's all lip singing. I don't know if I'm breaking any news oh, here, guys. Oh shit! But um, Santa's not real, and they lip sing at the Macy's. <laughs> That's and you think I'm bad for the for the show for the public? Mike just destroyed all the kids' uh, Easter Christmas. Bunny. Every Christmas, every kid watching yep. the show right now yep. has just got their Christmas ruined. This just in, Santa I'm is not kid, real. I'm sorry if you let your five-year-old watch the Mike and Brad show. <laughs> you prob <laughs> that's probably on you, actually. That's on you. Yeah, that's, on <laughs> that's probably on you. So anybody watching this that has this running just in their kitchen or maybe they're making dinner and their kids just heard it, they're uh, going to have a long, painful conversation yeah. coming up. So you're welcome. Let's just deal with it now like a band-aid. Let's just get it right over. The kid's three years old. He's ready to learn. There's no Santa. Hey, rip that band-aid <laughs> off and tell him Santa's not real and you're not getting anything because we're broke. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is Mike has plenty of cranberry sauce, so go over there and get a can of that for More your kid than for welcome Christmas. to come on over. There you go. So happy Thanksgiving. Um, hopefully we'll get another episode in. What's your favorite can... dish? Uh, in general, on, or on Thanksgiving, you mean? Thanksgiving. All right, see, this is going to upset you. See, this is where we, uh, Mike and I, as I said, we, always, we disagree about it a lot. Uh, in this regard, it would, it would drive you crazy the way I ate Thanksgiving dinner. You would lose your mind. Everybody looks at me. So we go to uh, my wife's aunt's house, and they have everything. I mean, everything. So it's a feast over there. And every year, everyone laughs at me because the way I do my plate. I'm so <laughs> I do it, I put turkey on the bottom, and then I just start loading. 
potato, mashed potatoes, the stuffing, corn, string beans. I load it all up. The only thing I don't put in there is the cranberries on the side because that's like yeah, dessert. The cranberry sauce can I'll never keep that on the side. Anything. But and then I just dump all this gravy and it's just like one big pot, like a mountain. They're like Brad's so it's eating like this a mountain. Shepherd's pie. It's like a shepherd's pie. But I know you you like to keep you like OCD, don't you like your food all I separate? Like, I don't like my food touching each other because it messes up the taste and everything. Um, I love it all together. And I you know I just bought I bought a bowl for cereal. Ready for this? Yeah. Keeps the milk separate from the cereal. One hundred percent. So you pour the milk in one side and the cereal on the other side. It keeps the cereal dry, and then you basically get a spoon of the dry cereal and you bring it over to and there's like a little dam section and bring it over to the milk section and wait till the last bite. It's, it's crunchy. So who has that kind of time? Mike takes an hour and a half to eat breakfast. Now. My only complaint is um, I, I did get it's the bowl. It's insane. My complaint is that is insane. That's my complaint. <laughs> my only complaint is the bowl is not big enough. It's kind of like a small bowl. So even though I got it in the mail, like <laughs> this is Mike. This is Mike's cereal bowl. He's got he's got the cereal over here, the milk, and he just ah. <laughs> so. Uh, even though it came in the mail, I was pretty excited about it about a month ago, and I've had... Um, he ordered it from China. I've had one bowl of cereal out of it, which it works amazing. Um, look it up. It's a cereal. If you just Google cereal bowl separator. Um, I will not look this up, but I know John Allen will definitely look that yeah, up. Yeah, look it up, John. He will definitely look it, it up. It is really amazing, but for a guy like me, I need a bigger bowl. It's um, shocking. I would love to see now Mike Murray's uh, chicken soup. It's just broth in one bowl, <laughs> then noodles, chicken, and he's just like noodle, chicken, broth, noodle, see, that's chicken. See, that's a misconception. I'm like, you know, Ace, Ace Cecil would be the first to get jump on me about my food touching, blah, blah, blah. But if the food is supposed to touch, I'm fine with it. If it's not supposed to touch, that's where I have a problem with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the call on what should be touching what. And on Thanksgiving, it all just one you giant You probably look pile. like um, Jim Carrey in, um, I'm just in like, oh, Fun with Dick and Jane when yeah, he's I'm like, at the buffet. I'm like Elf. And he turns around and his plate is <laughs> that's like exactly this exactly what I'm like. Everyone laughs at me every year. <laughs> and I get through the whole thing, and then I just like, oh, <laughs> and I go watch the Detroit Lions lose. They, no, I, I not this no year. More. Win this year. Detroit Lions are now the Who second best team. I don't know, but they're the second best team in the league. I don't remember a Thanksgiving in my life that they won. This is the year to win. Time out. You keep saying it's your second best team. Yes, that's right. Kansas City is not as good as their record. Detroit apparently is. Detroit proved their medal the other day by coming back. I know, that was a great They're game. Not, um, Detroit is the team. They go in and they destroy teams. Kansas City is, gets lucky and it's at the end of the game. Mike talks with his heart. I talk with my head. I hate <laughs> KC so much. But he's bet on the They are <laughs> undefeated and the reigning champs. They are the best team until somebody beats them. Which the best God, team on paper. I hope. So, you know, this, this week, they are the underdogs again against Buffalo. So I bet 50 on KC again. Where's the game? Buffalo. Ooh. I bet 50 on KC, and I hope I lose that 50 bucks. It'll be the greatest 50 bucks I ever spent. Buffalo, I don't trust them at all, but I hope they win. All right, moving on. Enough about how much we hate uh, Kansas City Chiefs, which I, we hate them so much. Um, Here's some more news. Uh, 40 monkeys escaped from a research lab in South Carolina. Did you hear about this? I think that's the most this? amazing story ever. They did, they did, I think they did capture some of them. And I don't know if the um, video was real, but there was a video of like them all jumping out of a tree into a lake. <laughs> Like one after another, like in the, these are having the best of life. Like Planet of the Apes. I want them to see, I didn't even think about that. Next thing you know, you're going to see these guys walking down the street in military uniforms. But I, um, the sad part, Brad, is they, they sit from a, a testing lab. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are big news buffs, but four years ago, there was some stories about a research lab and some animals in a place called Wuhan. So as soon as I heard, <laughs> as, soon, as soon as I heard research lab monkeys, I'm like, well, here it goes. There's the yeah. next pandemic. There we go. Yeah. 
and so get yourself texted for monkey pox. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably all down in the um the villages in um in Florida, these monkeys. The upside <laughs> is plenty of cranberry sauce when things go sideways. So everybody dust off your masks. The monkey uh, pox is coming, baby. I think uh, it's amazing. I think it, 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 you know they're the closest to a human as far as like how they react and their emotions and everything. And they're definitely having, you know, I don't know where they are. Where, what state are they in? South Carolina. Oh, so they could Well, they, that was a while ago. They could be, they could be at Johnston right now. Yeah, I don't they, know. They could have hit strike up one, <laughs> up 95. <laughs> they're coming to spend, uh, they're going to the Macy's, where going? Ooh, Macy's ooh, ooh, Day ooh. Parade is where they're heading <laughs> right now. Probably like disguising themselves, like putting themselves on each other's shoulders like a trench coat. <laughs> Barrel of monkeys. They're all hanging on each other's arms. I, uh, so I'm not going to get political uh, with this, but let me ask this because this leads to, in, in, in regards to pandemic and stuff. I was thinking of this question for you this week. I want to know how much money you would want to dust off the old mask. You could wear your uh, a COVID mask for a year, but now you, now you can take it off at home. You could take it off in the car. Some people love wearing them in the car. You could take them off in the car, and you can take them take it off when you perform. But, but you otherwise, off? you got to wear it for a year. How much money you want? Wow, it's a lot. It's a tough question, huh? I ask good questions on the Mike and Brad show. One million dollars. A million for a year. <laughs> yeah. So what if I offered you eight hundred thousand? Okay. <laughs> This is what he does. He starts high thinking there's not going to be. This is like deal or no deal. We're going to need some sponsors. I'll go a step further. So if we can break the mask up and I'll wear a different sponsor every day. So like one, if Dave gives me like no, $100,000. No, just awakening. a straight up COVID mask. Oh, so people look at me like I'm yep. a weirdo. Yeah. Huh? I've seen a lot of people wearing them again. I'm Set. like, what are they watching? They heard about the monkey, monkeys, South oh, Carolina. Monkey pox is making it happen. 700000 you drive a hot bargain, Brad. Yeah. You know what? Yes. You know why? Because who knows if it's me? I'll wear a hat and sunglasses, too. <laughs> Incognito. I'll look like the invisible man before he's invisible. Trench coat. <laughs> All right. 500000 It's just not safe. But yes, it's more money than I make. So you'll have to come down to what I make. What you do it for 300000 Yes. For a year, every oh, day. Yeah. Dude, every you're going to be like day three, and you're going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> Screw this money. <laughs> you do it for 300 grand. Three, that's, that's bottom line. That's bottom line. 275, no. 300. We have a winner. So listen, John Allen, if you've won that lottery, yeah. we got a uh, mask and Jedi costume. Separate times. That, the mask would ruin the Jedi costume. You're going to do these two different challenges. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the mask question. Um, I wanted to show a nice little shout out to Andiamo. Uh, I forgot to bring these over to the table. I, uh, I have some merch. Is to, he paying for this spot? I have some merch to move here. I, and I thought it, I was excited to back. Show, I was excited to show you this too, Mike. If I can freaking find it. Keep talking amongst yourselves. Uh, tell them a story while I look. Oh, look at this. Here we go. So just in time for the holidays. You oh! can order. Didn't I have that idea a long time yes, ago? You did. I said all the holidays, you should just change it just a little bit. That is amazing. You can order. So it's your Christmas. Oh, for the man. low price of twenty dollars. And I love how it's just so small and like you know what I mean. It's, it's great. Like, for the low price of twenty dollars, you can get wow. a Brad P.S. comedian Christmas shirt for a loved one. It's the season of giving. So that contact me. Shout out to Andy M. and shout out to Mike Murray for giving me the idea. For different wow. designs, we that even have is awesome. Christmas koozies. Oh Look at the Christmas no! Koozie. Look at that. That's wow. so nice. Both so, sides show. That is styling, baby. That is how wow. you do it, baby. So listen, uh, that should do it for the Mike and Brad show. Unless you have anything else to add, Mike Murray. Um. Oh, I know what we can add. Okay, hit me. Every year, me and you put out a commercial that we made years oh, ago. Oh, yes. Seeking yes. Christmas parties. Yes. How many, so now, which is, takes the media, the, the world by storm. Oh, Everybody by loves far. that video and everything. Um, so we're, we're just going to tell you how many shows we actually got from that fantastic video. And what was it again? 
<laughs> so if you're looking for two comics for your you're holiday party, be the we're still a person ever to hire. This is probably why they don't hire us. We're still available. And, so you know what? we'll send a re our res our pizza <laughs> pe resume. Resume. To, to um, we should start our own thing. Like I love that idea. Mm. We definitely will send our resume to a company. I think we should send it to like 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 maybe like Tesla. Or the Irish, or the Irish American Club in Newport. Well, hey, listen, <laughs> that's another show, folks. Yeah, that's a story for another episode. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.